So we have this epidemic now. Brothers are spending hours at the gym. And I'm not saying exercise and it's good and, and, and whatever. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Wallahi, I find that amazing. Brothers that have somehow miraculously find an hour to an hour half a day for the gym, sometimes five to six days a week. But he can't find half an hour for Quran in the whole month. So we have this obsession with looking, looking big, looking dominant, looking strong. Because in the heart of hearts, you and I, we believe, we interpret that to be manly. So one day the Prophet ﷺ is walking in the streets of Medina and he finds the Sahaba that have gathered around the tree. So it's an interesting scene. So he walks over Wasallam. When he walks over to the companions that are gathered around the tree, he notices Abdullah ibn Mas'ud hanging off the tree. And the Sahaba that were around the tree looking up, they were laughing and giggling. So he asks, he says to them, what are you laughing at? You see, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud wasn't the biggest guy in the world. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud at the time was wearing an izar. Like the towel, man, you know the towel that the brothers wear? Yeah? Like that. This was common fashion for many of the companions. That's all they... What's the term for it? What is that? Look, oh, lungi, lungi, the lungi, bro. <laughs> and Abdullah wasn't the biggest guy in the world. And he's climbing the tree. And in order to climb the tree, he had to lift his lungi up. So he's lifted up his lungi, he's hanging off the tree, and the Sahaba that are on the floor looking up. <laughs> so they literally, they're having a laugh. So the Prophet says, what are you laughing at? So they said, the Prophet of Allah, look at him. So he looks up and he sees what they will see and says, are you laughing at how skinny his legs are? Brothers that are spending hours in the gym, I sincerely hope you're listening. And those young boys that are aspiring to be like these brothers, I also hope you're listening. And those sisters that desire to marry such men, or should I say boys, I also hope you're listening. So the Prophet says, are you laughing at his legs? Meaning, are they too skinny? Are they not manly enough in your eyes? So the Sahaba said, yes, our Prophet of Allah, we're laughing at his legs. So he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I swear by Allah that those legs that you're laughing at are heavier than the mountain of Uhud in the eyes of Allah. So you might say, no, 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 but it's not about being physically big, nor is it about being physically strong, knowing how to handle yourself. But in the heart of hearts, every one of us here believes that what makes you a man is we worship this. We, we worship this. So you might say to me, brother, what do you mean we worship? I mean, you don't have to put a 20 pound note on the floor to make sajda to worship. No, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, May the one that worships the dollar, may he be destroyed and humiliated. May he be exhausted. That was the dua, that was the curse of the Prophet. When we say worship, anyone knows what worship is? Worship means to obey. When you obey, you worship. We worship the Baba. Why? Why? Because in the heart of hearts, the pound dictates and determines to you and I what time we wake up in the morning. 
It dictates to you and I what clothes should I be wearing. The pound is what dictates to you and I do I go to the Jum'ah prayer or don't I? Well, if my boss says yes, then I go. But if my employer says no, then brother, what do you want me to do? The pound is key. So your ability to make money, I'm a man, brother, I provide. Have you noticed this? Is this culture here or am I in this dilemma? Do you, do you guys have this culture here or not? So it's here, it's relevant. The pound. How much money you make. That determines how manly you are, brother. How much do you own, brother? How big is your house? What car do you drive? What brand is your handbag? Because I'm a man. Because I'm provide. Aisha narrates to her nephew, Hurwa. She says, O oh, Hurwa, I swear by Allah that we used to see the full moon then the full moon, then the full moon. Two complete months. And there would not be a single flame, meaning no cooking and no boiling in any of the nine houses of Rasulullah for two consecutive months. No cooking and no boiling. So Hurwa couldn't believe his ease. Authentic narration. So he says to her, my auntie, my auntie Aisha, how did you guys survive? She said, Al Aswadan, Al Tabu Al for two consecutive months, we lived off dates and water. Now I'm going to ask you, and please don't answer because you're going to embarrass yourself. In the heart of hearts, by the standards that we live in today, is the Prophet of Allah a man or not? Is he a provider or not? Two months, none of the nine houses would boil or cook anything. Water and dates. Is he a man? By our standards, 